Hello, Year 11, it's Mr Hutton here. Obviously, we can't be in school right now, but we can do as much as we can on our new project to get us up to speed for the next few weeks. Now, I'm going to give you a synoptic project, which is exactly the same as the, the Year 11 that's just left. That's the exam they did over the, over the Easter period. So it's going to be as relevant and as timely as possible. Now, what is a synoptic project? First of all, it is a project that's looking for all those skills in the round. So not just your knowledge about what does a saw look like, but everything, applying your skills all together. So have a read through this sheet and we'll continue in a minute. So the synoptic project is a project that's looking for all those skills. And if you look at the bottom of the page, there's five different objectives. Recall knowledge, apply knowledge, analyze but the most one, the highest one, is demonstrate your skills. Demonstrate that you can make something. So there's a project here. You've got to put your skills into action and make something and make it work. Okay, really, really important that you make it work. On this page, the ABC, planning, progress and safety. First of all, I'm going to be doing as much planning as I can for you, trying to get things ready, trying to get things that you need, etc., ready for the lesson. In your real projects, you're going to have to do that yourself. You're going to have to be a lot more self-motivated than we've been in the past. But hey, you can do it. Come on, this is year 11. You've got to step up now. Secondly, progress log. You've got to record everything you do. So if you make something or you do something, you do a drawing, make sure you're recording it as best you can. And finally, see conclusions. Make some clear conclusions. The main conclusion for this project is, does it work? Does it work? Go back to the objectives. Does it work? If it works, you're going to get the marks. If it doesn't work, why does it not work? So we're pushing for trying to get it as a, as a, as a working product. Now the scenario that the exam board have come up with is one of a footbridge. Now it's a footbridge going across a small river. There's even some in Manor Park you could go and have a look at. That's the idea. It's not a big bridge with trains or buses or cars on it. It's just for people. And you need to make sure that you're in that kind of, you know, arena. It's not a massive motorway bridge. It's something quite small going across a river just for people. Now, when you think about people, you've got to think about all people. You've got to think about people that can walk normally. You've got to be in wheelchairs, buggies, bikes, horses, anything that is not a car can be able to go across this bridge. And that's really, really important. Now, you need to make sure you're going to make a good model. It's got to be a, a model to scale. And the exam board is specified using straws. So I've got a lot of straws and I've got a lot of good ways of attaching those straws together to make a superb bridge. So read through this page. Having read through that, you should know all the details. We're making a footbridge. It is a simple footbridge. Don't make it too complicated. You don't get any marks for making it really complex. You've got to make it work. So keep, keep it on simple terms. You don't need to make it too, too complicated. Here we've got four little films to help you and put things in context. First of all, I found a film. It was a very similar situation in Australia. There's a bridge that was ineffective for lots of reasons. Uh, uh, people couldn't cross. It was dangerous. So they put in a new steel bridge. Bright red. Looks amazing. Have a look. The second one is what makes bridges so strong. So things to think about in terms of the structure. Um, it could be the third film you look at. That's about trusses. Generally with straws, you will make a truss bridge, which is basically interlocking triangular shapes. Be silly not to. And finally, the same guys talking about tension and compression. We've already looked at tension and compression before, so it should be in your vocabulary. It should be something that you want to do. Uh, in your kind of project, prove you know about it. So go through these films, okay? Pause it and we'll continue. Now moving on to the actual, um, the actual diagram of the bridge itself. I've drawn a picture for you so you can get your head around it. Now this is drawn in profile. We're looking from the side. So if we were looking at the bridge uh, from the side, this is what it would look like. We've got solid ground on either side. So this side and this side is solid ground. We can put some real good foundations in there. The water, I've drawn it at its highest point. So the bridge could come down into that dip a little bit, but probably not a lot. And the span, in other words, 
how long the bridge is. It's, it's got to be about 10 metres. So you've got to come up with your own design. It's got to be to scale and it's really got to fit that criteria. So it's got to be sat on that solid ground somehow on either side and it's got to have a span of at least 10 metres. Now here is a list of things that I found about uh, about real uh, about real footbridges so read this through it's really important that we're uh, you know we're as clear as possible about what the expectations are so these rules are looking for making sure the footbridge is open to all so imagine if you had a footbridge and you brought it along your bike and you couldn't get your bike across that would be bad it would be also bad if there was places to hide and someone jumped out on you halfway that would be bad it would be really bad if there wasn't bollards so people would whiz by on bikes or electric scooters knocking people off it would be terrible if you had a a younger brother in a in a push chair and they couldn't use it uh, etc so we've got to think about all the things that are really really important and these are really important uh, things to consider when we start to move on to our actual design, which we're going to do next. A really important task to do is to think about the options, trying to put that on a piece of paper. So I've broken it down into six stages. First of all, the users. Who's going to use it? Secondly, the aesthetics. Now, you might want to say, well, I want something that's bright and exciting and uh, amazing, or I just want it to be blending in the into the environment. I might want to make it out of reclaimed or reusable materials, uh, etc. Uh, there may be all sorts of aesthetics uh, that you are interested in. What's it going to look like? Third, safety. How are you going to make it safe? You know, you make sure that all metal uh, is all smoothed down. You make sure all wood is non-slip. You make sure that the paint is not, not crumbly, etc. All the things you can do to make it safe. The environmental concerns. What are you going to think about in terms of the, the water, in terms of the animal life, in terms of the environment? There might be things that you want to think about there. Cost is important. You can't make it out of, you know, uh, really expensive materials. You can't do that. You, that wouldn't happen. And finally, the robustness and the maintenance. You know, how are you going to make sure that, you, that your bridge is going to be in that outside environment for years to come and won't need maintenance every six months? Oh, it's broken again. That's broken. That's come off. I need to paint it. So how are you going to make sure that everything is going to work and work for a long time? Now, on this page, what I've got for you is a, a selection of different bridge designs, and they've all got names. They're all established designs. So, you know, coming up with your own totally unique design you don't really need to there's a lot of really effective highly highly detailed bridges here on the page that you can just adapt you can take it and make it your own make it into your own design but these are a really good place to start we've got um, bridges made of steel bridges out of timber etc there's all sorts of materials you could use but the design is normally really simple and what can you see triangles lots and lots of triangles and the way that you're going to put your bridge together so those triangles are sharp and really well detailed is really really important in this task the next page is a, a page about how bridges balance forces so obviously something going across the bridge might be something quite heavy you need to make sure that your bridge has a support so it doesn't collapse so it just goes through here, the, the, uh, the theory, you're going to have to put this theory into practice for your model. Now the next sheet is all about hand-drawn designs. Now hand-drawn designs is not using a ruler, it's drawing freehand. The example would want to see how you can sketch, how you can put your ideas together. So on this page, start thinking about the bridges you've already seen in the previous slide and start putting down some ideas that are your designs, your ideas. Now think about it. It doesn't need to be massive. It's 10 meters, which is about the size of the classroom, if you use that as a kind of basic idea. It's not some monumentally massive bridge. It's fairly, fairly on a pedestrian in its scale so it's not massive don't go overboard keep it simple now the final task for today's lesson is the two hand-drawn designs 
Now, what you need to be doing now is stop sketching. You need to be using a sharp pencil. You need to be using a ruler. And you need to be trying to convert your sketches into two hand-drawn but very accurate designs. Look back at the other truss bridges. Look back at the other designs and see if there's something that you can take on board to keep it into, into some, you know, simple but your design. Now think about those two sides of the bridges being symmetrical. You don't really want one side that's different from the other side. They're going to be symmetrical. So think about your design. Almost if you want, find the middle, draw one side and then copy it on the other side. That might be easier. But the big part of this lesson is to get two good designs that are your designs as realistic as possible. And remember, this is from the side. You know, this is just a one side of the bridge as it would look. You don't need to think in th uh, three dimensions yet, just think on two dimensions. This is what it would look like from the side. Now, if they have any problems, let me know. Hopefully this is self-explanatory. I've put as much information on there as you can. Please look at the films, they're really useful and try and get your own ideas flowing because we haven't got a lot of time. We need to get moving and making these bridges as soon as possible. Okay, if you need anything, let me know and I'll see you soon. Thank you.